Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to talk about how you can get help as a good Doe developer. The single best way to get help these days. And uh, let's just say the answer is kind of going to change the way that my career happens going forward as a tutorial maker. So if you've never heard of it before, Godot is an open source game engine. I've you know, I've covered it tons of times on in the past in this channel, including a uh, number of tutorials on how to actually go about using it. Uh, so let's say you want to get help now with your Godot problem. You, you, you got the basics of Godot down, uh, but you run into a very specific problem and you need to search for help. Well, where can you go? Well, you could go to their Discord server, obviously. One of the best places to probably start, though, is the documentation. And Godot has very good documentation. They've been working on it, definitely improving it. Uh, they've got good documentation for both the 3.5 and the 4.0 branch. Uh, but if the documentation does doesn't have the answer for you, where do you go? Well, one of the obvious answers is Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow is kind of like, I used to spend way too much time on Stack Overflow. I don't go there anymore, to be honest, because I think the quality has gone down somewhat. But you're going to notice there have been 1,377 questions asked, hopefully many of those actually answered, uh, in the world of the Godot tag. So you could go to Stack Overflow, maybe someone's run into the problem you've had in the past, but if you have a very specific question, that ain't going to help you out much either. Uh, we've also got the Godot Engine Q&A, which is kind of like their own little semi-version of Stack Overflow. Uh, very ha active, as you can see, two hours ago, one hour ago. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean there was an answer, so you're looking at at least a two-hour turnaround on potentially getting an answer and that is if the person actually understood what you were asking and I'm not poo-pooing on this at all like this is definitely a very nice resource and you know again as more people answer it becomes kind of a knowledge base of um, you know previous facts that you can then drill down through etc so this is definitely uh, one of those areas but let's say right here so I want to figure out how to fill an option button dynamically and that we got uh, no answers over time. So over a day ago, how do I fill an option button dynamically? Now I could search, I could find tutorials on using option buttons and no doubt find that. Or I can do this. And this is the first time where AI is coming for it. my job as a tutorial creator. And this is terrifying, to be honest, but also incredibly powerful. So if you are using uh, Godot or Unity or Unreal Engine or any of these other things, and you're looking for help sometime, this is the one AI product you can't ignore. This is ChatGPT. Uh, this is from OpenAI. They're the same people behind the... Um, Infamous Dally 2 image generator, and yeah, they're coming for uh, they're coming for coders and tutorial guys next. So, what's the question? Okay, so how do I fill an options button dynamically? Now, you're gonna have to give it a little bit more information, and you're also gonna have to spell correctly. You actually you don't. It's pretty good spell correcting uh, examples in Godot 3.5. All right, so we'll give it some detail. We will spell dynamically correction correctly. And we will ask this question. Now, their servers are getting slammed. This is in beta, so it can take a little bit of time to respond, but wait till you see the response that it brings. This is, again, the thing of horror. Now, the funny thing is, as a tutorial creator, I am more and more in the video format simply because Google has ruined the web. You, you just can't uh, find things as well as you used to. They emphasize their own stuff first and everything else. But this is another reason why text tutorials you're going to have so many sites pop up with tutorials where they don't understand the subject because they can just use chat GPT to generate the results. And here we go. There is a code result. Basically here it is getting your options button here. It's looping through and adding all of the various different items in. It will show another way of adding the um, items in here. And it's also giving you explanation of how all these things work. So you see down here, keep in mind that option button control is a control that displays a list of options the user can select from. When the user selects the um, an option, the selected signal is emitted and you can handle this signal in your script to perform an action based on the selected option. This is straight up good advice. And let's say I needed to do something very common. So uh, how do I find the um, distance between two node 2D objects in Godot? Something that you're going to need to do fairly early on. Basically, I have one object, another object. I want to find the distance between them. How do I do this? Once again, spit off the question, give it a few seconds. And what you're going to notice is from the uh, options code earlier on, if I like what it answered for me, I can boom, get that. Okay, so here we go. A little bit of a flaw there uh, in that um, their server choked. Again, it is a beta. You're going to have sometimes, and now I'm waiting on requests. So give it one second. All right, there we go. The server is back up. You can find the distance between two Node 2D objects in Godot using the distance to method of the Node 2D class. And of course, we have some sample code for how to find a distance between two objects. This is... 
I don't even know the words to describe this, to be honest. This is staggering. It really is help on demand. Now, I want to point something out. I've played around with ChatGPT quite a few times in the context of Godot development, and there have been some holes. There have been a couple of errors. I once asked it to, how do I play a sound uh, in Godot named um, mysound.wave? And it, uh, it gave me great results, to be honest. Uh, but what it didn't do is um, take into account that the mysound.wave isn't a vi viable variable name. So it did something like mysound.wave.play in the code, which isn't going to work because the dot .wave doesn't make for a proper variable. So you're going to get some invalid answers. But i got to be honest, when you... Uh, when you ask online, a Stack Overflow or otherwise, you're going to get a lot of invalid answers there as well. So that's not really uh, an area where you can uh, condemn the chat GPT responses. This, this is terrifying, to be honest, because what you're going to get is so many low effort tutorials pasted up there because you literally just ask chat GPT to, to generate some stuff. You can spit it down on your web page and submit it to Google. And Google is awful these days, so it's going to index that over good content. I hate to tell you folks, but... Um, this is going to kill off text tutorials. But it, I mostly was done with text tutorials. I actually only ever really do uh, code that goes with a video that I worked with as a supplement. Uh, just because Google's search engine is so bad for tutorial makers. There's been no point in doing text for a very long time. Uh, but this is going to just make it so much worse. But at the same time, for you as an end user, it's not going to need it as much because you could use this for answers. Now, it is kind of a catch-22 uh, because you're going to run into situations where uh, this is being fed off of those tutorials, which ironically enough, it's going to kill off. So where is it going to get its knowledge going forward? Um, this is smart because it has farmed all of the documentation online, all of the other tutorials people have generated online and so on. And if you kill off tutorial makers, you, well, where's your new knowledge base going to come from? Now I'm going to show you something impressive again. How do I get the disk between two node 2D objects in Godot using C sharp? So let's say you wanted to go the C sharp route instead of the GD script route. Can it do this? Spoiler alert, the answer is yes, it can do this, but let's see how it does. So you're gonna get um, another response. Another thing that's interesting is you ask the same question multiple times, you're not always going to get the same answer. Uh, and it also is some somewhat context aware. So in this chat, it knows what you asked previously. So if you do a follow-up question, it has context. But as you see right here, it is generating code in C Sharp. It, it's... Uh, it's really kind of scary, to be honest. And uh, in all honesty, uh, you know, other than the fact that this is probably going to lead the, to the death of text tutorials, this is definitely a tool you should have in your toolbox. Just, just know that it's not infallible. It is going to make mistakes. Now, let's end this off with something uh, very impressive, uh, potentially. So we're going to do another Godot thing, but we're going to ask something a little bit more complicated. So you're getting an idea of what kind of stuff ChatGPT can do when tested. So... How do I emulate the effect? No. Uh, how do I emulate the look of a CRT television um, using shaders in the Godot game engine? So let's see how I could do with shader programming in Godot. And do keep in mind, I'm using Godot as a particular example here. You could have done the same thing for Unity, Unreal Engine. Uh, you know what, I'll, I'll try one in just a minute for, say, the default game engine. Let's see if it's smart enough to know a little bit of Lua programming uh, on a game engine that has probably less of a um, knowledge base going on here. So here's how it's teaching us how to create a shader. To emulate the look of a CRT television using shaders in Godot, you can use a pixelation shader combined with a CRT distortion effect. Here is an example of how you can set this up. Create a new shader material and apply it to the sprite or texture you want to display on the screen. In the shader material, create a new shader and select canvas item as the type. This will allow the shader to be applied to a 2D element such as sprites or textures. Uh, in the shader code, add a uniform variable for the pixel size. It sets default to a small number such as 0.01. .01. This will control the pixelation effect. Use the fragment function to apply the pixelation effect to the texture. You can do this by dividing the UV coordinates by the pixel size and rounding the results to the nearest integer. This will cause the texture to be snapped to a grid of pixels. Add a distortion effect by applying a small amount of horizontal and vertical displacement to the UV coordinates based on the sin function of the UV coordinates. If your mind is not blown as of right now, I don't know what to say. To be honest, all of the... Um, AI stuff I've seen to this point in time hasn't really impressed me that much. There's been previous code attempts as well. So we had like um, um, 
uh, CodePilot, uh, GitHub's CodePilot, for example, and it's it's a neat little AI tool, buddy. Uh, but it was literally just verbatim spitting out code. Uh, this one is staggering, except this <laughs> this isn't so ideal. So let me try and run that again. So yeah, you can also you can click the the little edit button beside your most recent query and say say save and commit again, and it will run it again. So here is the result here. So as you saw, there are definitely some uh, networking issues with Chat GPT. Uh, there's a lot of people uh, using this thing right now. Um, so you definitely get some results here. We're actually getting different results here now, which is interesting. So let's see what shader it actually generates for us. So the last example we did uh, gave us a much more in-depth example of how it was going to work. This one is using a completely different approach. So as I said, you can ask it over and over and over again and get completely different results until you get something that you like. Um, I don't know where this is going to end up in terms of the quality. I'd like the other one's uh, explanation a whole lot better. Uh, I think this one is stealing it more verbatim from another source. But once again, if you just need to do something like, how do I create a shader? Now, and I'm saying it kind of dismissively, just need to do. Uh, this, this is mind-blowing, to be honest. Except, again, there are some networking issues. You, you saw some problems that we had. Uh, but this is... <laughs> this is really quite impressive. Now, I mentioned earlier on, let's, let's try something with uh, a bit smaller of a knowledge base. How do I, I move a sprite on screen in the default game engine when the user hits the space bar? All right, we'll try that as a search. Different game engine, definitely a smaller knowledge base. Uh, the default game engine uses Lua by default. Uh, so let's see if it can handle, again, uh, a topic that has a much, much smaller knowledge base. Now, this isn't going to replace coders because, again, this is going to generate errors sometimes. Uh, the advice it gives is not uh, infallible, but it is quite, quite solid. So let's see if it can... Oh, wow. It can handle the fold game engine. Set sprite, set position, update itself. If input keyboard equals hash space, then move the sprite up by 50 units, 50 units, and done. Oh, my God. That is basically verbatim the code that you would actually write um, in a tutorial. Uh, it doesn't necessarily explain how game objects work and how it's going to hook up to the one that's defined in the game. Uh, you also have to use uh, keyboard mapping, I believe, uh, to define. I'm not 100% certain. It's been a while since I've done default. It doesn't necessarily cover that, but... That is staggeringly cool. So uh, if you're looking to, um, you know, if you're looking for help, uh, I hate to say it, but AI may be your first best place to go. And if the answer doesn't work for you, you can then move on to Discord server or Stack Overflow or whatever. But I think you're, you're going to find, again, ironically, this kind of level of integration, like what we're seeing from ChatGPT, this is going to make something like Stack Overflow less valuable. Because why would I go to Stack Overflow uh, and ask a question where I can do the same thing to an AI, get a code example, be able to ask follow-up questions, and it happens in a fraction of a fraction of a time. Now, the kicker is, again, I almost guarantee that one of the areas where this guy is pulling his knowledge, so it's pulling it from reading the documentation online, which is a very good thing, but I also guarantee it's pulling it from tutorials and from um, Stack Overflow answers and similar sources like that. And once this starts replacing those sources, where is it going to learn from because it's replaced them all? And at that point in time, I don't know, maybe AI has gone sentient and it doesn't need us anymore anyways, which is a very distinct possibility. But honestly, uh, if you haven't been blown away by any AI application yet, if you're a Godot developer and you're looking for like, I don't know, uh, help. <laughs> I guess that's the word I'm looking for. If you're looking for online help, uh, honestly, ChatGPT may actually be the first place to go. And that in some ways terrifies the hell out of me. By the way, you can sign up. Uh, basically, just come on over here. Click try ChatGDP, uh, GPT. Uh, I signed in with my um, Gmail account. And as you saw, though, uh, the servers can fail. Uh, it's under high load right now. But all this stuff is available. And then you just basically, boom, I want my code. Copy it over to the game engine, and you are good to go. We saw a variety of different approaches. And as you saw from the shader example, it actually did two versions of it, completely different versions. If you want, just keep asking the same question or ask slightly different variations of the question. Or as we saw here, how do I get the disk between two nodes? Fine. How do I get the disk between two nodes using a completely different programming language? Boom. 
And it did it. It just blows my mind, to be honest. But I'm curious, what do you think of this as basically, potentially, the ultimate Godot tutor? Uh, this is going to change the world of text tutorial creation, but I think that world was kind of dying anyways because of discoverability and the way that Google has ruined the internet and ads and all the other crap that's made the internet a terrible place. Uh, but this this is going to probably be the nail in the coffin for text tutorial creators. I'm curious what you think. Let me know. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.